I just realized I'm muted. All right, that's no problem. I like I was what I was saying is that I just got to wait a bit about 30 seconds for the breakout room stall close and for us, everybody to get kicked out of them. Um, this is only a temporary thing because again, I want to make sure everybody's on the same point. For some of you, you've already seen this before um, when I came to your breakout room. But again, I just need to make sure everybody's on the same page so that, you know, that everybody can have a successful day working on uh, on programs. Okay, great. Okay, it looks like um, the breakout rooms have closed. So, okay, like I just was saying, we're going to get everybody um, on the same page here. Right. So, and I'm going to do that by writing some code myself. So here we are. Um, oh, new share. I'm going to share my entire screen. Here we go. Okay. So we've got our rabbit. So the first thing we want our rabbit to do, so we want to change this so that the rabbit stays put. And I've already done that. Next thing we're going to do is that the most, one of the most important things, no matter what your strategy is, is to look around in all directions, to sense the rabbit's environment. And we've done that by using basically the same code the fox has, which is int i, where i is a direction, int model, model dot min direction is equal to zero. So int mod, i is mod, min direction. And then i is less than, and this is very important. So if you're having issues later on, check it. It's not less than, it's less than or equal to model dot max direction. Because if you don't have that, you're going to fail to look in one of your directions, right? If you don't have that, you're going to just not see the fox if it's coming from the north, uh, from the north west. Okay. So now that we can see, now we can ask ourselves uh, to look in that direction. And the way I'm going to do that is by calling our look function. The rabbit is an animal, and as a result, it gets all the functions that animals have. And that function that we're going to care about is look. So we're going to look in a specific direction. Specifically here, we're going to go for model dot fox. And this is very parallel to what the fox was doing. It was looking for the rabbit, right? This is the same exact code, only I've done it, only it's doing it for the rabbit. Now, one of the things I didn't include is these variables. Now, the rabbit, you don't need, the rabbit needs no memory unless you're trying to go to above a 90% survive, above a 90% survival rate, okay? To get to a 90% survival rate, you don't need an, you don't need to remember uh, if you could see him, uh, if you've seen him, if seen the fox before, okay? You don't need any of that. You don't need any memory. You just need to be reactive. If I, if I see the fox, I is that direction. So I don't even have to set direction to fox because I know I is that direction. So now how do I get him to move? <clears throat> Excuse me. Return model dot turn i and four. So again, given model, given a direction, and we've seen this here in the fox when he tries to do this, you know, which is that if I can go, so model dot turn says if forward, the direction I'm currently pointing in is i, so I'm, and I'm on video doing this. So if that is i, then this is Model.turn i1, i in 2, i in 3, i in 4 is directly away, i in 5, i in 6, i and 7, i and 8, and then so on. It will keep repeating i in 9, but you generally don't need that. But the point being is that it handles the messy, messy math for you. And you don't need to do, and this prevents you from having to do eight statements like saying if uh, i equal equals model.n right, return model dot s, right? If it's to the north, go south. If it's to the east, go west. You know, you don't have to do any of that. 
Instead, if it's direction I, return the opposite direction. Now, this is actually not a great strategy, of course. Um, or rather, going directly away is not a great strategy. And we'll see right here what happens. The grader says, I'll survive about three times. So two, that's round three. Right? So escape one times, it is not a good strategy. And the reason why is that it only allows, it only adds maybe a couple more turns to our survival. Um, so if I run the rabbit hunt, we can see that what's gonna happen to the rabbit is that I will run it, stays put, <clears throat> and then it runs directly away and crashes into the wall. And then once it gets to the wall, if you return an invalid direction, it's just gonna stay put rather than crash the program, which is great. Okay, so, okay. But at least now, what, what do we have? We have a default strategy and then we have a way to sense our environment and then react to our environment. So it's the reacting, the sensing of the environment is going great. Remember, less than or equal to. But it are reacting to the environment, not so great. So how do I react to the environment? Well, maybe rather than going directly away, I'm gonna go directly, uh, I'm going to sidestep. Remember I and two, that would be, instead of going away, I'm gonna go to the right. So let's see how that strategy looks on here step. And now why is this a valuable strategy? Well, remember the rabbit, the fox's line of sight is very limited, right? I'm going to go ahead and just draw his lines of sight right now. So if I draw, this is his line of sight. And just for the sake of argument, pretend that the bushes aren't that that this bush isn't doesn't exist okay for sake of argument so say i see the fox we can't see each other because that bush is in the way but say that that bush wasn't there well he just the fox just moved here so he hasn't had the chance to see me yet he hasn't had the chance to look so again these areas over here are just giant blind spots so if the rabbit just moves in to the right, that's what we've got modeled at turn two, it moves into that blind spot. And the rabbit doesn't have a chance to see him. Mind you, of course, then he has to do the next thing next turn, next thing next turn, and, and then eventually we get the same problem where I crash into a wall. But let's go ahead and let this one play out and see how it works. Because it can work. Nope, didn't work there. But he survived for longer. So, okay. And if we run our grader, we get 38 survive. Just from this one change in the very simple line, we get a 12% survival rate. But here's the thing, you think that since 12 and six left and right are symmetrical, you th would think they would get the same result. But if we run the grader with changing it to six to be left going left instead of going right, we find that we get that our survival rate pretty much doubles. Uh, sorry, I was just replying to a DM. Um, person who sent that, no problem. No problem at all. Okay, so um, left and right, we've got, uh, ma makes a difference. Okay, but again, we get into the same kind of thing where if we're in a loop, we might crash into a wall, right? Or if we don't have any cover that we get duck behind, we might crash into a wall. So how do I get around that? Well, this is where we actually get into where we can get a full solution to the program, which is notice that the fox, when he's trying to go in a direction, he uses the
the can move function in conjunction with return with the model dot turn. And he says, if I can move in this direction, do it. But if I can't do in that direction, try another direction. So that's kind of where you want to go with this next. That makes sense to everybody? Um, let me go ahead and just for, in case people are frantically trying to copy paste stuff or trying to copy down what I had, um, you know, there's that joke about the math professor writing stuff down, it gets all complicated and then he immediately erases it. Right, no, none of that here. I can just copy, paste, boom. Okay, so I'm gonna send, I'm just gonna drop it in chat. Of course, if you are coming back to the video later, you can just simply pause the video and type it, right? But there it is in chat, uh, that the, the, the baseline for the function. So it is now almost 11 o'clock. So let's take our a second break. Okay, because my throat's apparently a bit dry. I need something more to drink. And then let's say 11.15, we'll come back. And hopefully we should be able to get very close to a solution. I will be adjusting the due dates, not due today. I will be adjusting the due dates. Um, so, but I think we should be able to get, to get close to a solution with this. Um, and I'll split us up into breakout rooms when we get back again. But I wanted to bring everybody together and make sure we are on the same page. Okay, so let's take a 15 minute break because I'm, you know, a four hour block is a long time. I will be, I will be making us take breaks just so that we can, you know, browse Reddit and watch cat videos or something. Mm -hmm. All right. See you in 15.